I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall on me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Flying rock storm. It is, isn't it? Are you okay, Ruby? Oh, sorry. I just had this funny feeling, like a memory, but I can't remember if I remember it or not. Look, there's another big one. Look. I think the flying rocks are all gone, Ruby. I hope so, Chomper. I hope so. You kids sure look tired. Up all night watching the big flying rock storm, eh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Well, I expect there will be more flying rocks tonight. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. More flying rocks? That's right. It's all part of the Flying Rocks of Many Nights. Flying Rocks of Many Nights? Huh? That's what they call it, and for good reason, too. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it lasts the course of several nights then the flying rocks will pass. So while they're here, you'll see them light up the darkest night. But flying rocks up in the sky are no reason for fright. In the sky, the flying rocks streak by. In the sky, you'll see them way up high. In the sky, somehow the rocks can fly. Nobody really knows quite why They're up in the sky In the sky Say, I just remembered. I remember seeing the flying rocks of many nights before. You have? Yes. I was very little and living in the mysterious beyond. I had wandered off to look for my mom. Mommy? <laughs> Mommy? Ruby, are you okay? Well, she couldn't have gone far. What if something happened to her? We'll find her. <laughs> Ruby! <laughs> Mommy! Where were you? I looked to find you, but I didn't see you anywhere. <sighs> I couldn't find you either, but I have an idea so this will never happen again. It's just beyond Secluded Canyon. This is Hanging Rock. It's a safety place. So if something like this ever happens again, find your way here and I'll do the same. And then we'll find each other. That night was another night of flying rocks and we stayed together <sighs> under Hanging Rock. <sighs> now it's happening again. So now I need to return to Hanging Rock. Oh, well, not now, Ruby. When flying rocks hit the ground in the mysterious beyond, they can start fires. F -f -f fires The mysterious beyond doesn't have as much water as we do here, so a fire can be very dangerous. But if there is danger, my family will go to Hanging Rock to be safe, and I have to go there to make sure they are safe. It 
Too dangerous, Ruby. Petrie's right. Yeah, it's very dangerous. It is, it is. I think I need to do some thinking in my thinking place. I know it might be dangerous to go, but I'll never feel okay unless I go make sure my family is okay. trees weren't burned the last time I was here. Are we near Hanging Rock yet? I don't know. I can't believe I can't find what I know was there. Well, it was a long time ago. And you were much younger then. Uh, well, we definitely won't get there if we don't go somewhere. This way. This place should look so familiar to me. Ugh, that's because we're going in circles. It's gonna be dark soon, Ruby. <laughs> then let's keep moving. If Hanging Rock is hard to find in the light, I sure won't see it in the dark. Maybe a little rest will help you see Hanging Rock better. I can't rest until I can't keep my eyes open anymore. Ooh, Mr. Thicknose was right about the flying rocks coming again tonight. Well, they don't look any more dangerous in the mysterious beyond. Do you see them, Spike? Spike? Where did he go? Spike? Spike! Where are you? Hey, Spike! Come on back! Guys! Shh! <laughs> oh, I was worried about... 
about you, Spike? Maybe we should rest. <laughs> tell you you shouldn't come with me. Shh, they're coming back. <laughs> Where do we go? In here. <gasps> this way. Oh, it's taking so long. Kids chasing you. I figured you were okay. I've been running from those guys almost all my life. Do you live here with your family? Don't have a family. I don't really remember my parents. Red Claw chased them away a long time ago. At least I think he did. <laughs> uh, they're just figuring out they lost you. This way. Screech! They're looking for us! <laughs> they won't find you. Nobody knows the mysterious beyond like I do. Do you know Hanging Rock? It's near Secluded Canyon. Hanging Rock? Keep up with me! Ugh. He moves almost as fast as he talks. <laughs> Nowhere. Will you not come with us? Well, I am faster by myself. Plus, there are things I have to do, places I have to be. Back that away. Huh? Okay. Thanks, Skip. We weren't 
expecting anyone else here. We sure weren't expecting you, Ruby. But we're sure glad you're you. I'm glad you're you, too. <laughs> I feel so happy now that I know you're safe. It's so good to see you safe in our safety place. <laughs> Flying rocks had me so very worried. I thought they might cause you some harm. So I came here to see if you were okay. Cause I was so concerned about you. I feel so happy. I want everyone to see. It's Come, everyone, this way! Oh, Ruby, I'm glad to see you. I truly am. But you shouldn't have come here. It's too dangerous. That's what my friend said, too. But they came with me anyway. They sure did, didn't they? Oh, they must care for you very much. Yes. It's almost like... like they're my family, too. <laughs> yes, yes, yes! We are your Great Valley family. We are, we are. Oh, thank you, Ducky. Chomper. Spike. <laughs> now that I know you're okay, I need to go back. I still need to help Chomper find out how to help save the Mysterious Beyond from Red Claw. We'll always be here for you, Ruby. I know. I'll be back when I return. Until we got here. Oh, thanks. I. Oh, no! Uh, 
Time on. Come on, Skip. You too. Gotcha. Ugh, up you go. You're safe, Littlefoot. Petrie. Sarah. We were worried about you, so we came looking for you. But I knew there was no way we'd find you unless we climbed up here. We find you, but then fire start. Don't worry. We'll head out as soon as the fire dies down. Well, <laughs> looks like the fire will die out quicker than I thought. Stay in the Great Valley, too. Yep, yep, yep. Would that be okay? I mean, I don't have any family to stay with there. Believe me, Skip. Living in the Great Valley is just like living with one great big family. Shortcut. Hmm. Well, at least I. Hey, look! I think I know that herd. I do too. It's Allie. Allie's come back. Let's go see her. I wish we had a shortcut. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall on me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow our way home. To the land before time. Want to. 
Huh? Not want to play? Who is this rat guy? I am Rhett. <laughs> well, I'm Sarah, and this is Littlefoot. We're Allie's old friends. Tell them. Um, Rhett is very brave, but he won't play with kids he doesn't know. That doesn't sound very brave. Oh, yeah, Little Nick. My name is Little Foot. Well, I'm Rhett the Brave. Hero of the Herd. Scarer of the Sharp Teeth. Hero of the Herd? <clears throat> Scarer of the Sharp Teeth? The ones we've seen aren't scared of flying rocks, earthshakes, or smoking mountains. Let alone little long necks. Well, they're scared of me. Tell them all about your adventures, Rhett. Well, while you kids have been living here safe all the time, I've been in the mysterious beyond protecting my herd. Stay back! I'll handle this! scared of those flying rocks. Now, another time, the herd was being chased. Go on without me. I won't let them hurt you. That was a close one. <laughs> That's some tale. I know. And then there was the time I used my tail to build a mountain of rocks that the sharp teeth couldn't climb. <laughs> You haven't heard anything yet. I think we've heard enough. We've heard plenty. So, Allie, were you with Rhett when any of this stuff happened? Um, no. That happened before our herds joined up. And you really believe that he built a mountain of rocks with his tail? While being chased by sharp teeth? Oh, well, that mountain of rocks was mostly built. But I did finish the top. See? He finished the top! Of a mountain? That's pretty hard to believe. You're just mad because you can't knock down trees with your tail. Come on, Sarah. I guess we're just not brave enough to play with Allie anymore. <laughs> Want to play rescue? Um, okay. I can't believe Allie believes those crazy stories. We were her friends. Hmm. Well, it's not fair. He can't be her best friend. I don't care. The stories he's telling are phony. Brave! 
Me want to meet him. No, Petrie. Rhett's making stuff up and has convinced Allie he's telling the truth. Allie thinks he's so brave, and he's not. It makes me so mad. I'm angry, too. Well, the longer you're mad, the less you're happy. So, what we do? I don't know, Petrie. But we gotta find a way to show Allie the truth. Yeah. I guess I could just try telling Allie that Red is making stuff up again. But what if she does not believe you again? What if Red hit you with tail? <laughs> We need to show Allie that Rhett's not as brave as he says. Yeah, I'd like to see what Rhett would do if a real sharp tooth came around. Hmm. Wait, what if we really did have him face a real sharp tooth? You want to bring a real sharp tooth into the Great Valley? Uh, I don't know if that plan's such a good plan. My plan is to use a sharp tooth that's already here. <laughs> There's sharp tooth in Great Valley. Ooh. Yep, and he's right here. You mean me? But Chomper is nice. He is, he is. We know Chomper's nice, but you don't know that until you know him. And Allie and Rhett have never met Chomper. Right! Now, here's how it'll work. Ah! Chomper will chase us around, pretending he's a vicious sharp tooth. <laughs> then Littlefoot shows up and asks Rhett to help him save everyone. Grr, grr. But when Rhett gets scared, Allie will see he's been making up all of those stories. See? If we all pretend right, it'll work. I can pretend to be scared in. Yup, yup, yup. Oh, me good at being scared. <laughs> I'm not sure about this. Come on. On, Littlefoot, it's a great plan. What can possibly go wrong? What do you think, Chomper? It sounds kind of fun to me. As long as nobody gets hurt. Nobody will get hurt. We're all just going to be pretending. Then it sounds like I'll be pretending to have friends for dinner. For dinner, pretend to have friends for dinner. We'll say he wants three horn soup and little foot stew. It might be funny when he chew on you. Mm -hmm. That's not a very nice thing to do. To, to have friends for dinner, <laughs> friends for dinner. Don't wanna be friends for dinner. Don't wanna be spike a la mode. Littlefoot, what do you say now? It probably would show Allie that Red's not so brave. <sighs> okay, let's do it. Ready? And go! Come on, guys, you're supposed to be scared. And you're supposed to be scary. <gasps> Guys, be serious. Start again. Ah! 
Me hungry, me scared. And I am even more scared-ed. We need help to be saved. <laughs> Perfect. Now rush in and stand right next to me, little foot. Let's try it one more time. Ah! He hungry! Me scared! And I am even more scared than it. We need help to be saved! Time to show Allie what red is really like. Come on, let's play rescue. Again? Could we play tag instead? Or the pointy seat game? Or swimmer splasher? Rescue it is! Start yelling help! You sound different. That wasn't me. That was someone who really needs help. Rescue them, Red! Help! Ah! He hungry! Me scared! And I am even more scared of it. We need help to be saved! <laughs> Who's chasing you? Who, who's hungry? He is! <laughs> Yourself. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Ah! <laughs> um, what's going on? <laughs> we wanted to show you that Rhett wasn't as brave as he said he was, so I came up with this plan. But that shark tooth, where did he come from? Oh, sorry, Allie. Meet Chomper. Hi, Allie. Sorry if I scared you. You're friends with a sharp tooth? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Chomper and Ruby live in the secret caverns. It's kind of a long story. But one thing's for sure, we are not afraid to play with Chomper. So what do you think? Do you want to play with us? Well, sure. I guess Red isn't as brave as he says he is. Where'd he go, anyway?
King Sharp Tooth? I've never heard of such a thing. The Sharp Tooth. This can't be about me. He's a Sharp Tooth. Who cares if he talks? Let's get rid of him. <gasps> I suppose we must. Old one. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing you. You were calling for help. They wanted to show me that all of Rhett's stories were made up. Stories? What stories? Um. He kept telling me that he saved his herd from many sharp teeth before we met them. Rhett, come forward. Uh, yes. Did you make up stories to fool these children? Um, um, uh, um. It's okay, Rhett. Yes, I did. I'm sorry. Little ones, this is very serious. Did you see what happened when you tried to fool each other? Yes, I guess so. You may have wanted it to be a joke, but a sharp tooth attack is no laughing matter. We're all really sorry, old one. And as for you... Uh, yes? I don't know how you became friends with so many here in the Great Valley. But I think it's good. Longnecks, follow me! <laughs> we can play now. We can. We can. Me not it if we play tag. I'm too tired to be it. Hey, Rhett. Want to play tag? But I made up all my adventures. It doesn't mean we can't all have new adventures. Come on, Red. What are you waiting for? Ah, uh, you guys are the best. Okay, Spike, you're it. <laughs> And that's why tree stars change color before the cold times. Wow, that was a great one, Grandpa. Yes, tell us another story so we can listen to it. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I know. Once many cold times ago, there was a young longneck named Star Watcher. Every night, he climbed to the top of a hill to look at the sky stars. But one night, the sky stars decided to come down out of the sky. They wanted to take a look at the long neck who was always looking at them. The sky stars said hello to Star Watcher and asked if he would like to visit them up in the sky. Are you sure that's how it happened? Huh? I'm not so sure you're telling that story right. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall.
Seems to climb and vanish to roam Oh, seems to follow on the way home To the land before time I think you must be forgetting the stories in your old age. Saro, is that you? It's me, all right. I thought I'd never find you. I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd given up hope. I never gave up. Like green food in cold times, it, it may, may shrink, shrink away, but, but it, it will, will always grow back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa? Who is this? Children, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. His name is Sorrow. It's a pleasure to meet you all. But who's this? A sharp tooth? <laughs> <laughs> That's Chomper. He was hatched by Littlefoot. And now he's living with us. Yeah. I want to learn how different dinosaurs can all get along. Well, you couldn't have found a better teacher. It was good to hear you tell one of the long neck stories again. Grandpa's great at telling stories. Oh, I know. Your grandpa was a great story speaker. Story speaker? What's that? A story speaker would travel the land, telling the great long neck stories to all the long neck herds. And you were a story speaker, Grandpa? Your grandpa was one of the finest story speakers ever. I tried to learn every story I could from him. Oh, well, I, I just wanted everyone to remember our important past. <laughs> Me like stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, Sorrow, could you tell us one of the great long neck stories? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we might be able to remember a story or two. Now, who knows how long necks got their name? Oh, it is because they have long necks. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone knows that. But did you know that long necks didn't always have long necks? They didn't? Many cold times ago, before you or I had hatched, Long necks had short necks. Back then, the trees were very short, so they could eat tree stars from the top of the trees. The trees would sing to the bright circle every day as it crossed the sky. The bright circle liked their song so much that it reached down and pulled the trees until they were very tall. That way, they would be closer to the sky when they sang their bright circle songs. But now, the tree stars were so high that the short-necked long necks couldn't reach them. That night, the night circle felt sorry for them and reached down to comfort them. The light made them feel better. And so, they lifted their heads up to get closer to the night circle. In doing so, their necks stretched enough to reach the tree stars. The kindness of the night circle helped us become long necks. And that is how long necks got their long necks. That was a very good story. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Looks like talking about tree stars made Spike hungry. <laughs> 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 A 
must have been great to get to tell stories all the time. It is an honor to tell the great long neck stories. And a very important job. But some of the long necks have begun to forget their stories. That's why you have to come back and be a story speaker again. I, what? Oh, I don't think I can. We'll travel the land, telling everyone the great long neck stories, just like we used to. It, it sounds like a nice idea. So you're going to be the story speaker again, Grandpa? Of course he is. Saro, I'm sorry. I know how important the stories are. And I loved being a story speaker, but that was long ago. Things are different now. What do you mean, Grandpa? My place is here in the Great Valley, with you and Grandma and all the others. But you're the story speaker. The Longnecks need you. I need you. I can't tell the stories on my own. Saro, I am very sorry. But even though my days of wandering have passed... Then you've turned your back on the Longnecks and all of our traditions. Saro, wait! I have nothing left to say to you. bad for sorrow. He's hurt and angry, and I don't want him to feel that way. I had hoped he and I would be able to tell the great stories together. Uh, but those days are long gone. Remembering, remembering, is a kind of a funny thing. It makes me think of time gone by. Friends are made by saying hi. Thoughts I'll always hold dear. Remembering makes reappear. But even when the thoughts are sad, I'll always have remembering. Sorrow would someday become a story speaker. He knows the stories as well as I ever did. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I never had the chance. And now Sorrow's too angry to listen to me. Well, it's sad, really. I've already begun to forget some of the long neck stories. I can't let the long neck stories be lost. I've got to find Sorrow. Sarah's footprints lead out into the mysterious beyond. Who? Who is it? <gasps> Come on out. I I'm not scared of you. Why would you be scared of me? Oh, Chomper. I, I was just... What are you doing? I'm following you. What are you doing? I'm following Sorrow's footprints. I have to bring him back. Grandpa wants him to be the new story speaker. Wow! Then you're gonna need my sniffer so you can find him fast. I got him! Then let's go. Wow, the 
It looks big. Maybe to us, but Sorrow's a full-grown long neck. He could just walk across. Maybe we can walk across, too. See? It's not that deep. Whoa! <laughs> I think it might just be a little too deep for me to walk across. Hmm. It might not be too deep for me. See? Can I get a ride? Sure, hop on. Thanks. Now just keep going straight. Like Sorrow probably just stepped right over this ledge. But it's too high for me. Almost! Almost! Not quite. But maybe a whole pile of rocks will help us climb over. Too bad Sarah's not here. She's really good at pushing things around. There. That should do it. Let's give it a try. Yeah. It worked, little foot. We make a pretty good team, Chomper. Yeah, we do. Now let's go try to catch up with Sorrow. His smell is getting stronger. Come on, little foot. I'm coming, I'm coming. See? There he is. Littlefoot? Chomper? What are you doing following me? We came to ask you to come back to the Great Valley. You need to talk to my grandpa. I don't have anything more to say to him. Why are you so mad at Littlefoot's grandpa? If he doesn't come with me to be the story speaker, all the great stories will be forgotten. Well, why can't you be the story speaker? Well, because he's the story speaker. I can't do it by myself. I can't. Look! Sliding rocks! Oh, no. followed me. Those rocks are now blocking the way back to the Great Valley. Oh no, we're trapped. What are we gonna do? We will be okay. Maybe we can climb over. There's no way. We might be stuck here forever. Chomper, just take a deep breath. And calm down. I don't think I can. It's dark and it's stuffy. Close your eyes. Think of a 
sky filled with puffies until we can find a way out of here. But what if you can't dig out of these rocks? What will we do to survive? We'll make it home alive. You must be Did your grandpa ever tell you the story of Tall Stepper? Tall Stepper? I don't think so. Tall Stepper grew up to be a great long-necked leader. But when he was young, just about your age, he learned a great lesson about being brave. Tall Stepper and his little sister were playing one day and having a great time. They were having so much fun that the wind became very jealous. The wind swirled and blew around Tall Stepper's sister and carried her into the air and up into its wind cave in a tall, tall mountain. Tall Stepper was scared to follow the wind up into its wind cave, but he knew that if he was going to save his sister, that is what he would have to do. When Tall Stepper reached the cave, the wind made a deal with him. If he could beat the wind in a race down the mountain, his sister would be released. Tall Stepper knew it would be dangerous, but he knew he had to do it to save his sister. No one had ever beaten the wind before. Tall Stepper found the courage he needed to race faster than any long neck before him. Because Tall Stepper found courage when he was afraid, he was able to beat the wind down the mountain. The wind kept his promise and brought Tall Stepper's sister back from the cave. Tall Stepper grew into a great leader. And whenever he needed to be brave, he remembered how he once had the courage to beat the wind. And sometimes, when I need courage, I think of Tall Stepper too. Wow. Thanks for telling us that story, Sorrow. Yeah. I feel better now. Littlefoot! Littlefoot! Grandpa? Littlefoot? Yeah! I hear him too! Grandpa? Grandpa? Littlefoot! Me find you! Petrie! What are you doing here? Me find them! Everyone! Over here! you guys find us? We followed your footprints to follow you up into the canyon. Then we heard at the rock slide. We heard you yelling, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorrow, there's something I want to talk to you about. About what I said earlier? I'm sorry about that. No, no, Sorrow. I think you should be the new story speaker. Me? But I, I can't tell the great stories without you. But Sara, you told us a story. The one about Tall Stepper. We were really scared. But your story helped us feel a lot better. You see, Sara, you saw a chance for one of the great stories to teach something important at a time of need. That's what a good storyteller does. That's what a story speaker does. So, 
You really think I'm ready to be a story speaker? I know you are. Me too. That's right. Mm -hmm. I just wish I had told you earlier. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I thought story speakers always had something to say. Maybe you're right. In fact, this reminds me of the story about the very first story speaker. Her name was First Voice. One day, First Voice came upon a great cave. But when she walked into the cave, 